Hey, Dave Ferrari here. Several years ago, I was asked to build a New England waterfront display for Seaport Model Works. The purpose of the display was to show off Seaport's line of boat models and kits. The display was built using traditional methods. A 3-inch pine frame covered with a half-inch thick sheet of black gator board with wiggle wood for the background. The landforms were modeled using one inch thick blue styrofoam. The part of the display that gets the most comment is the water. So this little video is about how I built the water on the seaport display. The first thing we should discuss is the base. The base for the water on the seaport display is gator board. Please don't make the mistake of using styrofoam as the base for your water styrofoam outgasses and it will ruin the water over time. The material I use for the water's surface is Mod Podge. Mod Podge is a thick gloss medium that's easy to apply and produces a wonderful water surface. The surface itself first must be painted. And here's the gator board with the bottom colors painted on it. And the colors I'm using here are black, white, cerulean blue, and medium green. These are all acrylic colors. For the sand, I'm using the same earth color that I'm using for the rest of the display. What follows is a short video clip that I made for another project showing how I paint the water base. And for the water, you may have seen me do this before. I'm going to use four colors. I'm going to use black, that you see here. I'm going to use cerulean blue, a little bit of medium green, and at the end I'm going to use white. I start by using the black. This is school grade acrylic and it's pretty loose. It's pretty thin. So it's perfect for going along and painting out the edges. You want to have a nice sharp edge between the sand or rocks and the water. Here's the way I like to do it. I'm not much of a painter. I'm more of a dabber. So I have picked up some cerulean blue and I'm dabbing it into the black. And I can see by looking at it right now, there's not quite enough. So I'm going to keep adding blue and then a few specks of green as I go until I get the color I want. I want the water to be dark at the edges and lighter in the middle, which is what you see here. I can't reach the big brush into the corner here right under the bridge, so I'm taking a smaller brush and I'm just pulling some paint off the big brush and I'm just pushing it in the corner. Now I'm moving to the back section and for me this is a grand experiment because I want the water in the foreground to be darker than the water in the background. I want the water right at the horizon of the module here to look like the sun's hitting it so I'm going to add some white to the color as I go. But first I'm doing the same thing in the back section here. I'm delineating the shoreline the walls and such from the water. You know if you make a mistake here and get some of the paint up on the rocks or up on the retaining walls you can just take a wet brush right now before it sets and go in with plenty of water and wash the acrylic paint away. In fact you'll have a nice effect because you, you create a wash here and some of the color will run in between the cracks and crevices and create a nice shadow effect. As you can see, I'm intentionally making the background lighter than the foreground. And it's going to get lighter as I go back towards the horizon in the rear of the module. Here I'm adding blue and quite a bit of white to the back. And this is going to take some blending. So I may blend it forward almost as far as like halfway to the lighthouse. I want to make sure I get the background color blended thoroughly with the foreground so there's no line. I want a gradual lightening as it goes towards the back. Now you can see that there are areas that I haven't blended into yet, especially near the rocks by the lighthouse and in front of the retaining walls. But I'll come back and catch this and one of the tricks of doing this is to use a brush that is clean and dry. And the clean dry brush you want it to come in 
and just kind of blend everything together. It doesn't have any paint on it, but what it does, it picks up the paint from the water surface and then it moves it around as you daub and it blends it back in. The last step before I leave the water, I think I'm going to add right here a little bit of turmoil. So I'm adding some white and some blue and some green coming out from under the bridge. I want it to look like the water there is moving fast and it's draining out of the bay towards the horizon. Now we go away and allow the acrylic paint to dry completely. Several days is best. After the acrylic is dried it's very important to seal the surface and all you need is one coat of Mod Podge to do this and all this does it protects the paint you've already applied and the short video clip that's coming up will show this in greater detail. So I'm going to put on one layer of Mod Podge. What this does it seals up the paint and makes it easy to clean if we get some foliage on the paint surface. So you don't have to be too careful when you do this. I'm using a china bristle brush and I'm just laying on enough Mod Podge so that the surface is completely covered. I am being very careful not to incorporate bubbles into the surface. I'm taking the tip of the brush and I'm going ahead and breaking all the bubbles so that they don't dry and leave a little crater on the water surface. A handy trick to keep in mind when you're putting the first layer on your water here is to keep a few q-tips handy in case the brush slips and you get some Mod Podge up on the bridge or on the rocks or other places where you don't want them. Just use the q-tip to wipe away the Mod Podge. Now I'm going to go work on something else while this whole water surface dries. It's best if you let this first coat dry overnight. Now that the water is sealed, it's time to finish the scenery. All of the scenery, the grass, the trees, and everything should be finished before you finish the water. And for finishing the water, I like to use a mop brush. The two brushes on the right hand side in this photo are mop brushes, and they're perfect for applying Mod Podge in such a way that it doesn't leave bubbles behind. The secret to building beautiful water with Mod Podge is to put some Mod Podge on the mop brush and just plop it onto the water surface. Here you can see me using a china bristle brush to get under the bridge, but for the rest of the water I'm going to use the mop brush, as you'll see here. And the method that I use is just plopping it on. And by plopping it on you don't agitate the surface too much so you don't incorporate a lot of bubbles and that's the secret to this method. The other secret is you need to apply at least 10 coats this way so that means before you go to bed at night you come down you put a, a coat of water on your on your project you go to bed the next evening you put a second coat on and so on. Each layer builds up to give you beautiful looking water. The last step when you've completely finished the water and you're satisfied with the results is to seal the surface and what I use is acrylic furniture varnish. I use high gloss furniture varnish and I brush it over the surface to seal it and what it does it, it produces a hard surface that allows you to clean it. It's not sticky. It doesn't absorb dust. So that's how I built the water on the seaport display. Give it a try, I'm sure you'll love it. And if you want more information, you can go to my website. It's www.mrscenery.com. And there you'll find a whole array of videos and DVDs that'll help you build better scenery and better water.